morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through the live stream. We pray that you are all in good health. We ask that all present respect the instructions given by our ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks when entering, leaving, or moving within the church. At the time of Holy Communion, we will give you further instructions, and at the end of Mass, we ask you to exit through the main doors at the back of the church. Our presider today is Archbishop Peter Hunt, and our gathering chant is in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 595, Christians Let Us Love One Another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. We come together to give God praise and to present to him our needs and petitions that we may worthily offer God praise today. We pause to call to mind his goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, as Gentiles by birth, remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ, in Christ Jesus, you were once You who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For Christ is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with the commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So Christ came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him both of us have access to one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. refrain for the psalm is show us your steadfast love Lord O Lord show us your steadfast love O Lord and grant us your salvation
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the disciples, Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. The Gospel of the Lord. In our first reading today, Paul, speaking to the Ephesians, speaks about how they once, they were Gentiles, he was Jewish, uh, but now through Christ they are all one. And that they are called no longer to be strangers and aliens, but citizens and saints, members of the household of God. And in our gospel today, Jesus, speaking to the disciples, tells them as members of the household of God, it's important for them to be dressed for action and to have their lamps lit, to seek always to be on their toes, always ready to to act as Christ did, uh, to live with that same uh, openness, uh, that same uh, alertness and, and willingness to reach out and to bring help and love to others. Today, the Universal Church celebrates the memorial of St. Hedwig uh, of Bavaria and St. Mary, uh, Margaret Mary Alico, uh, who was the foundress of the devotion to the Sacred Heart. In both of their lives, we see people who very much had that sense of being members of the household of God and who very much were always alert and seeking to serve the Lord. In the case of St. Margaret Mary Alico, she was one who became very fascinated and and fixated in a way, in a good way, uh, on the the heart of Jesus, on the love that Jesus lived with. And St. Hedwig, married to Henry, the Duke of Silesia, uh, both her and her husband lived very much their lives seeking to serve the Lord uh, within the civil office that he held. Uh, Starting monasteries, uh, most uh, particularly the uh, female monastery at Trebitz, and uh, day by day seeking, though they themselves were rulers, to reach out to the most poor and needy uh, in their society, uh, building hospitals and and helping the poor. Definitely examples for us of people who took seriously the words of Christ and took seriously that call to be part of his family. In the Missalette today, they have a quotation from St. Margaret Mary Alico, And it's a beautiful quotation and one that I think certainly was important in her life and may be also good advice for you and I in terms of how we are called uh, to live as members of the household of God and to build up the dwelling place of God here on earth. She says, Keep your heart in peace and let nothing trouble you, not even your faults. You must humble yourself and amend them peacefully without being discouraged or cast down, for God's dwelling is in peace. Paul, speaking to the Ephesians, certainly speaks about the Lord being with us and calling us to be one in him. As we continue in our Mass today, receiving the Lord in the Eucharist, we ask him to help us to cherish his presence, not only with us, but with the family of faith, and to always be open to his presence in ourselves, and in all those that we meet. God bless you. With confidence in God's goodness, let us stand and offer to him our prayers of petition. We begin by praying for our Pope, and for all of our religious and civil leaders, that they may be open to God's guidance and that they may seek to live with love and charity 
For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for ourselves and for all who have been given the gift of faith that day by day we may seek to serve the Lord with peace in our hearts and with love for our neighbors. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those people who today are struggling with hurt or pain or illness of any kind, for God's consolation and healing power in their lives, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts. We have, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope. Be your unworthy servant, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also your brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching. We dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying Amen, Upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of amen before the distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher, ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward, and maintain a two-meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands, bow before receiving communion, uh, sanitize your hands before receiving communion, bow towards the host, in silence, receive the host in your hands, step aside to consume the host, return to your pew as directed by the ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The Body of Christ. Our communion hymn is number 6.4 in the Celebrate and Songbook, Let Us Be Bread.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Before the dismissal, I forgot the pandemic prayer, so I invite you to join with me in the prayer to, of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O oh Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is number 563 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Sing a New Song. Thank you. 